Hey welcome back, this week's video is 3 different Game of Thrones themed treats, and the first is Easy Game of Thrones Cheesecakes. Let's get started. Start by mixing together the crushed biscuits and the melted butter. Press this down into your cheesecake tins. I'm making individual cheesecakes, but of course you can make one big one if you prefer. And by the way, the full recipe quantities are written out in the description box below. And put these in the fridge while you're preparing the filling. And to make the filling, add the cream cheese to a large bowl and mix until smooth. Then add the sugar and mix well. And then add the cream and whip the mixture for a few minutes until fluffy. Lastly add the lemon juice and vanilla and mix again. So I really don't like using gelatin, but I get a lot of questions asking why I don't put it in cheesecakes when I don't. So I thought I'd add gelatin to half of the cheesecakes and just show you the difference at the end and you can decide whether or not you want to use it. And the recipe for the gelatin one will be down below as well. And to assemble, add a big scoop of filling on top of the base and then add as much cherry pie filling as your heart desires. And I actually use strawberry because that's all I could find, but I think cherry would be better because it looks more bloody and it's for Game of Thrones after all. And then add another scoop of cheesecake and level that off and place these in the fridge until they're set. And for the gelatin ones you'll have to wait about 4 hours, but if you didn't use gelatin then you'll need to leave them overnight to set. To decorate these you'll need stencils for whichever house you want to use. And I just found the ones I used by typing in Game of Thrones house sigil template on Google. Then I put them in a Word document, printed it off and put that in a plastic sleeve. Then melt dark chocolate in a piping bag and trace the symbols straight onto the plastic sleeve. Leave them to set and then peel them off and place them on top of each of the cheesecakes. And so this is one of the ones I added gelatin to and as you can see it held its shape really well so if you don't mind using gelatin then go for it. And now this is the one without the gelatin and as you can see it's definitely not as perfect looking but it did hold its shape and it didn't melt or fall apart and of course it tastes exactly the same. And so the next treat is the Dye Wolf Pretzels. So the first thing you want to do is add the water, yeast and sugar to a small bowl. Then mix and set that aside for about 10 minutes for the yeast to activate. And while that's doing that, add the flour, sugar and salt to a large bowl. Then pour the yeast mixture and the oil into the well and mix until a dough forms. And you can add extra flour if you need to. The dough should be soft but it shouldn't be so sticky that it sticks to the sides of the bowl and like sticks all over your hands when you touch it. And then knead this for about 8 to 10 minutes and if you have a stand mixer with a dough hook you can use that. Then oil the bowl and put the dough bowl back in and cover with a damp tea towel and leave to rise for about an hour until the dough is twice the size. Then divide the dough into four equal parts and I made one practice wolf and this is what it looks like. So to make one of those, roll out your dough segment but roll it out more in the middle so that the two ends are about twice the size of the middle. Then cut those two ends in half and take the bottom bits from each end and then fold and shape them to look like legs. And then take the top right segment and smooth it out to look like a tail so it's sort of bigger at the base and thins out at the end. Then for the face you want to take the top left one and cut that again to make a little mouth. And then just pull at the top to make a little pointy ear. 
and then take a knife and cut the grooves. It's just lines on the feet and tail and then a crisscross pattern on the tummy. And I also poked a little hole for the eye and little grooves on the ear. And then add baking soda and hot water to a large bowl. Dip the pretzels into this and float them around for a few seconds and then place on a tray with parchment paper. And then sprinkle generously with salt and add cloves for the eyes if you want and bake for about 10 to 15 minutes until golden. And I was kind of worried that the insides of the belly wouldn't bake properly or the edges would burn because it's not really a traditional pretzel shape, but they actually worked really well. Um, if you're not sure, you can just poke a knife in the bottom where you won't see it and just see if it's still doughy. And then melt some butter and brush on top. And how cute is this little mini pink saucepan? I know it doesn't really fit the whole Game of Thrones theme, but it's cute. Anyway, that's it. How good did these look? They were so amazing and I haven't had soft pretzels since I was in America a few years ago, so I was so excited about this recipe turning out. And please let me know if you'd like to see more savory things like this because I'm definitely open to doing them. And onto the last one, which is back into the dessert theme, is a dragon egg cake. And this one was really cool and probably my favorite. I just really liked how this one turned out. So to start, you'll need a big batch of green frosting or whatever color egg you want to do. And then a cake that's tall and sort of narrow so it can be carved into an egg. And I used five layers of cake. I used three in the middle that were completely leveled off and then two that I left with the tops risen just to help create the egg shape. And if you have access to it, gold luster spray or luster dust so take the two rounded cakes and carve them to look like the top and a bottom of an egg. And whichever one is bigger, use that as a base and cut off just a little bit off the bottom so it doesn't fall over. And then spread a little bit of the frosting on a plate or cake board and then add the bottom layer of cake. Spread over a layer of the frosting and add one of the middle layers of cake. Repeat this with all the middle layers and then add the final layer of cake on top. And if it doesn't quite look like an egg, just carve it a bit more until it does. And then add a thin layer of frosting and place in the fridge until it hardens. In the meantime, add the rest of the frosting in a piping bag fitted with a 1cm circle piping tip. And then to pipe on the scales, pipe a small circle of frosting, but don't lift the bag away, instead drag it upwards. Then pipe the second one just at the end of the first scale. So keep doing this until you have a vertical row, and then keep adding more rows until the entire cake is covered. But just one thing is that this method is usually used horizontally and on level surfaces, not curved ones like an egg. And because of this, as you go around, the rows will start to curve on an angle. And to counteract this, about every third row, just add like a half row that stops halfway up the egg and then make a next row, but this one goes all the way up and just kind of try and make it meet the other two rows. And it's kind of hard to explain when I'm doing a voiceover, but I think you can kind of see what I mean in the video. And just keep doing this until all that's covered and don't worry if it's not 100% perfect. As you can see, I started my scales about a quarter way up. That's because the eggs in the show don't have scales at the bottom. It's kind of just like this rough looking egg bit. And if you want, honestly, you could just do the scales over the whole thing. It'd probably be easier, but I just went back in and put some frosting on a little palette knife and just kind of like dabbed it against the bottom of the cake and tried to recreate that look. And lastly, add gold luster if you have it. And the spray kind is the easiest, but if you only have the dust, then put your cake in the fridge or freezer until the frosting hardens and then just dust it over with a soft, clean brush. Also, if you can't get any kind of metallic luster stuff, but you kind of want it to have more of dimension, you could try going for like an ombre look with the scales. I think something like that would look really cool, but you wouldn't have to buy anything special, just food dye.
Anyway, that's the finished cake. I am so pleased with how this turned out. And if you're wondering, the cake I used in the middle is black velvet cake. And if you want a tutorial on that, please leave a comment and I will definitely do it. And thank you so much for watching and let me know if you want to see more Game of Thrones themed treats because I had a couple of other ideas but I thought this video was going to be way too long already so I left them out. So thanks again for watching and if you like this video and you're not already subscribed please do that and I will see you next week.